All right, guys, welcome to the RLP show. We are going to get started. We've got a lot of really, really great questions tonight that have come into the inbox. Ooh, my glasses are dirty. Give me one second, y'all. These glasses need some help. They need some help. Shay. Hey, Shay, baby. Natalie, Miss Pink Secrets, Devora444, Natalie Paz, Natasha. Hey guys. Anybody else's allergies or something acting up? I seem crazy. My head is hurting. I'm trying to get it together over here. Filmology Pro, Beagle Holly. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hey guys. Hey Natalie. Hi Den. Jabari. Hello, hello. The great Derek. Tam Hall 71. Hey guys, welcome. Oh, you guys love this sweatshirt. It says uh suck it up buttercup. Hey Tina. Suck it up buttercup. This is from uh Nicole Fitness. Nicole, Nicole Duncan Fit. She is one of our certified abundant life coaches and she has a line of uh, workout and sweats and, and sweatshirts. And so I'm going to tag her when we post the video because uh, I love her sweatshirt and I wore it. Then pink looks great on you. Thank you, sweetheart. I love you. I miss you. All right. Love the color. Thank you. I'm just all bright tonight. Like, woo. I need it, guys, because my head is really, really, really hurting. Okay, so we're going to hop on. I'm going to look up some of our questions here that have come into the inbox. What are we talking about tonight? Jabari, we talking about a lot of stuff. There was one in here. Um, it says, let's see how long this one is. All right. Merci beaucoup for your help. Dear Rebecca. I absolutely adore you and I thank you so much for your energy and the quality of your content. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, I'd be glad to participate to one of your next IG lives regarding the following topic. Oh, she wants to come on live. Oh, I got to save this one. She wants to come on live maybe next week. So I'm not going to do that one. Okay, let me do this one. Uh, go back. Um, how about church girls? Anonymous or church girls, abstinence versus men in the church. I will please keep this anonymous. It says, hi, Rebecca. I watched your live on Friday night where you took a question from this th or 37 year old woman working in, a, in the church. She mentioned that she is abstaining until marriage and she was having trouble dating possibly because of that. Well, I wanted to share my own experience with you. Last year, I dated a pastor, 45 year old black male single never married no children who also studied and practiced law so he pretty much was the perfect man right well i asked him if his faith is so important to him why was he dating online why didn't he find a woman in the church to be his wife and he confessed to me that he did try but although he appreciates and follows the commitment to be abstinent until marriage he found that some church girls are also completely unaffectionate no kissing, no making out, no gentle nudges when out in public, no cuddles on the couch, nothing. And he couldn't take it anymore. This was the reason he ended his previous serious relationship with a girl from the church. So, as much as I cared about him, I personally understood this situation more from the other woman's perspective. Because as a young girl, I was taught to guard my purity. It was my responsibility. And just like many girls, too young in some cases, I felt I had to guard my body at all times, knowing that in, in the event anything did happen, I would be punished, not the other person. I believe that as a result, for some women, deflecting men's advances become so deeply ingrained, we don't even know it's still happening. And let's get real. Grown men have expectations. So sad. Anywho, that was an earful. I would love to hear from you, other women and even men, if they think this is true. Also, it would be great if we could continue the Church Girl series. I'm totally loving it. Oh, please don't mention my name. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Okay. So, 
Are there double standards for abstinence for church girls versus men in church, for women in church versus men in church? Most definitely. Most definitely. And the gentleman that she was, she met, she dated him. Um, he was a pastor, 45 years old, very handsome, single, never married, no children, and also a lawyer. She's, he's saying that in his dating her, he's bearing, being 100% transparent. Not that he would say that from the pulpit, right? Now, let's be clear. He's not going to get in the pulpit and say on a Sunday morning that he would not date church girls because they're not affectionate at all because that would not be the the politically correct, religiously correct thing for him to say from the pulpit. But confessing to her with someone he's actually dating that he doesn't want to date church girls and he's on an online dating app, right? Because he doesn't want to date church girls because they're not affectionate. And she's bringing up the whole fact of how so many women in the church have been taught abstinence and it's programmed and just, you know, conditioned into mindset, into behavior, uh, the self-discipline around abstinence from the time you're young, that there are plenty and many uh, women in the church who are abstaining and, and, uh, and obviously abstain from affection, kissing. Now, is that all church girls? No, we know that's not true either. Okay, I would probably venture a guess that women that don't do anything are more of the exception than the rule. Let's just be honest, okay? But is he being honest? Yes. Derek just said, yes, he's being honest. He's just saying, I'm not going to date someone and potentially marry them and not have her ever kiss them, not ever even cuddled, hugged, touched a little bit, you know, feeling your vibe, getting... Right, Jabari Ross says, what does abstinence have to do with affection? Well, I mean, Jabari, there would be a plenty of women who are abstinent that literally it has been programmed into their behavior that any type of petting, affection, or anything is gonna lead to sex so they try to avoid even that I've met them I've had them on we talked about it I've had clients I, I know for a fact there are women like this and this is where the problem comes in where abstinent women have literally shut their sexuality and shut down a lot of femininity believe it or not a lot of femininity and their sexuality gets just shut down and they don't even really realize it because they've just been so programmed to think abstain, abstain, abstain. However, right now we're dealing with a different problem because now you don't know how to date. You don't know how to interact with men. The, is, is a man going to marry you and having never kissed you? I know there's some very prominent Christian couples who have said, you know, they waited and never even kissed. Uh, are they pastors who said that? Yes. Are they telling the truth? I don't know. Let's just keep it honest. I don't, I just don't think it's that realistic, especially when you've got couples who have dated two, three years, engaged before they got married, and you mean they didn't even kiss? <sighs> Somebody said, then you wind up in all these different marriages that don't work. Yes, and, I, and I'm not throwing shade, guys. I'm not throwing shade at all. But I'm just saying that human behavior, human psychology is not built human sexuality human attraction and chemistry is not built for that long term it's really not if you're really i mean i'm going to start to question sexuality i'm going to start to question uh, true interests right the great derek says those couples are exceptions to the rule but that's not common at all and and like a yes Keish Love, um, Love says it's misleading for real. 
because at the end of the day, where is the, and those are pastors. So unless you're going to marry a pastor, and do I even recommend you should be making it a goal to marry a pastor? Guys, do you guys understand the pressures that pastors are under? Do you understand how complicated their lives and their personal lives are? The divorce rate in the church, the divorce rate. Do you know the average marriage only lasts eight years? And I bet if we look it up for Christians in the church, it's even less. It's not more. Don't think that Christians have longer marriages or a better run at it than the average person. They don't. It is a level playing field. And so unless you're going to marry a pastor and then, you know, so I'll just keep it 100. I don't know that I'm marrying a man I've never kissed. Um, somebody says the fascina fascination with virgins is um, is similar to the young girl body fantasy. Yes. Yeah. It's a little bit of perversion sometimes I think comes into play with the obsession with virgins. Um, yeah. The, Fritz Jr. says given the rate of divorces let's it's at 44.2 percent now it's going down guys it is going down but i believe it's also because people are not getting quite as married as fast or they are contemplating marriage more or more sincerely or seriously before they get involved i think the divorce rate's going down because the millennials their numbers are starting to come into play um marriages in, in america don't work whether they've kissed before or not yeah i think that Sex in a marriage is so important. Sexual attraction is so important that ladies, those of you who are being abstinent, I would, here, here's my honest opinion. It's, and I've said this before in other videos over the years, it's really easy to be abstinent when you're not really into anyone, when you don't, you're not in love. When you're, you're not feeling somebody, you're not dating somebody, you, you have no temptations, no in love interests. Now, you meet a man that you're falling in love with and now he's, and it's mutual and you guys are beginning to talk about marriage. Um, do you really think that you guys are keeping your hands off of each other 100% when you fall in love? I mean, we're not 14. Anybody that's grown, grown, is going to want some kisses, some hugs, something, some some booty rubs, some hugs, something, something. I, I'm just saying. Because, I mean, most people aren't virgins, right? And and so, you know, you, you're, you know your buttons, you know... But Jehovah Witnesses are strict with affection. They don't believe in being left alone with each other. You literally have to babysit them. So that's back to real old school where you got chaperones making sure you're abstaining. And I'm thinking, you know, that that's probably one of the only ways that that's going to happen is if it's some type of very strict chaperone type situation. Because, yeah, Miss Pink Secret says, I'm not keeping my hands to myself. Now, for those of you where you said, is it a question of faith, Rebecca? It's a question of faith. Um, does abstinence mean not kissing? Does abstinence mean not touching? Does abstinence mean, right? Somebody says, how do you handle your faith in sexuality? I think that this is a personal question, right? It's a personal question. I think that to me, abstinence is not having intercourse or getting naked. That's abstinence to me. The minute you go into some heavy panting, the minute you petting, the minute you go into some clothes coming off, uh, first, second base, you know, I the minute you start going into fondling, going beneath the clothes, Carrie says Rebecca couldn't keep her hands off me. 
Carrie Pope has entered the discussion. Yeah, and he's a pastor. So the Popes are pretty much telling you, yeah, we were struggling. <laughs> we were struggling, y'all. We were struggling. Now, Miss Pope talking about I couldn't keep my hands off him. I tell people all the time, uh, no, I feel like Mr. Pope had five hands, six hands, ten hands. How? Where did all these hands come from? How? how right? I'm just saying. Carrie and I were crazy. We are crazy about each other. We have that kind of chemistry. We dated, we met, and we were married within 16 months. We were engaged um, within 14 months. And that Ashley says, we yes, we limped to the altar. Ain't even going to try to fake the funk. That chemistry was crazy. Carrie says, well, I am anointed and blessed. But Carrie talking about his anointed and blessed hands. Guys? I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. And anytime I think, and, and here's the other red flag. If here's now, even if you abstain and you don't do anything, here's the thing. There, it should at least be hard. It should be hard. I, it, it shouldn't be easy to keep your hands off of each other. It shouldn't be easy to not kiss because that's the absence of passion that's the absence of interest passion chemistry I mean it, it should at least be really hard you know I literally had to stop seeing Carrie the closer we got to our wedding because it was just <laughs> yeah we, we couldn't even be around each other it was like fireworks just one kiss and it felt like fireworks it felt like where did my clothes go like magic that's what it was like i'm just telling you i i'm just keeping it real y'all you know i wasn't a church girl <laughs> listen i'm just saying no flames or sparks. You're mentally checked out or was never interested. Or I, I, I know some, I know a couple of women personally who abstained only to get to their honeymoon and there be major, major issues, major issues with the sex, major issues, major issues in the marriage around sex. You have to understand that there are some people hiding sexual issues behind abstinence. There are some people bearding and hiding sexuality preferences, hiding their sexuality behind abstinence. I, I, I'm just telling you what I know and what I've heard, all the stories. So you've got gay men being abstinent with women but not being abstinent with men that will actually marry a whole woman and have a family knowing that he's not, you know, organically attracted to women, but he's trying to appear, keep up the appearances for the church sake. Yeah. Ladies, I would say if he is not all over you or trying to be all over you, I would, I would have some questions. And, and it's going to, if you are going to be abstinent, as you can see from the email, the anonymous email, you can't depend on the men to be abstinent, even men of God. So at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you to hold that standard. Even if you kiss or do a little bit of stuff as you guys are headed towards marriage, it's going to be up to you to hold that standard of no sex, of abstinence, not the man. Because even the 45-year-old pastor lawyer is saying he expecting, he, he having sex. I mean, he, he's pretty much saying, you know, he's talking about 
the commitment to be absent to marriage, he found that some churchgoers are completely unaffectionate, no kissing, no making out, no gentle nudges, no cuddles on the couch. You playing with fire. You talking about no he wants to kiss, make out, cuddles on the couch. Well, if you're 45 years old and you ain't never been married and you're a pastor, you having sex. You having sex. You, that that if you doing all that, you we ain't like I said, we're not kids. You a whole grown ass man. You having sex. And so any woman who dates him who's abstinent is going to find herself in a compromising position the minute they're alone at his house or yours where he's trying to kiss you and what was the language kiss cuddles on the couch and making out that's what he wants what exactly ashley one thing leads to another that ain't that ain't stopping there unless you're so strong ladies and here's the other subconscious behavior around abstinence guess what ladies you don't really really you don't really trust yourself in that situation to say no which is why you don't try to put yourself in that situation which is how you back yourself into a corner with not with being not affectionate we're gonna i'm gonna teach about it in the divine dating course because you can be affectionate, but you've got to keep it in public. You can hold hands. You can have some kisses. But you can't be Netflix and chilling. You can't be cuddled up on the couch, booed up, making out in the dark, private quarters of your home or his home. Heck no, it's going to be going down in the town on like Donkey Kong. So there's got to be some boundaries that you put in place around your absence. You can hold hands and kiss and hug in public, but you're not going to have sex in public, right? It's a healthy boundary. Cuddles on the couch, Gina. <laughs> Cuddles on the couch. Right. So, you know, make sure you get on the wait list for the Divine Dating course because I'm going to cover it. I'm going to talk about it all. I'll help you guys with that, okay? All right. Let me find another question. That was a good one. Why is my computer acting up? Oh, Lord. Is my internet acting crazy or am I just this page? She's answering anonymous questions. Cobwebs getting clean. Ah! Listen. Sips tea. Okay, let me see what's going on. My daggone stupid email is acting up, y'all. Okay, let me see if it's back in now. Okay, here we go. Uh, d -d 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 Four engagements. Okay, she said four engagements and she can't come on because she doesn't have an Instagram. Okay, here we go. Four engagements. Hey, Mrs. Pope, blessings in abundance. I've been watching your videos on YouTube for years now. Thank you for being transparent, open, and honest. I'm almost finished with your I Can't Make You Love Me 30-day course, heartbreak course. Life-changing. I am a 40-plus mother of two, son, 22, daughter, soon to be 17. I've been engaged four different times to different men. My recent engagement was last November. It ended April this year. All the men had one thing in common. They were not ready. They wanted me, but didn't want anyone else to have me. They weren't ready, but didn't want anyone else to have me knowing they were not ready. Any advice would be appreciated. How do I get out of this ugly cycle? How do I attract the man who is ready? Thank you so much. Okay, so here's the key. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm not, you're not going to, you're not going to like it. I'm just going to let you know right now. <laughs> if you are always, so, so it, here's, here's the thing. Attraction. At all times, you are attracting all different types of people, men and women. You are attracting 
all different types of people. Emotionally available, emotionally unavailable, tall, short, skinny, chubby, white, black, Latina, Latino. You, you're attracting all different types of people, right? Now, the key is what is your responsibility in that formula is that you're responsible for who you choose to entertain, who you choose to give a chance. So the problem isn't with the men, Anonymous. The problem is that's who you like. There's, I'm looking at your picture, Anonymous. I see a pretty lady. I see a very pretty lady. You can't tell me that there's not all different types of men that are showing you some interest. And out of the four men you've given a chance to they've all been broken engagements Dan says what's the common denominator exactly so anonymous you've got to ask yourself some hard questions do you like a bad boy type do you like an emotionally unavailable type do you like a hard to get type do you like a complicated man what is the other terminology for complicated toxic damaged hurting not self-aware not emotionally intelligent i could go on and on with adjectives here because if you like emotionally unavailable slash complicated slash hurt men you're literally barking up the wrong tree if you want to be engaged or you want to be married, right? If you want to be married and you want a healthy, happy marriage, you've got to start choosing some different type of men. You need the good guy. You need the good guy who's gone to therapy. You need the good guy who expresses his feelings. You need the sensitive good guy. You need the hardworking good guy. You need the family man. You need the man who is a, a way less complicated than these last four jokers that you entertained. So yes, you are the common denominator. Danielle says, what about needy men? Yep. Needy men, hurt men, it's all the same. Desperate men, men with potential. I mean, when you are... 35 plus, 30 plus, if you are not in your 20s, you cannot afford to be dating potential. You, if When you meet them, if you are 30 plus, where you meet them at, you have to be willing to say, if nothing changed about them and things stayed just exactly as they are right now, would I be happy with them? especially 35 plus and 40 plus. They are who they are. Great Derek says, some women just like to build men. Yes, some women like projects. Some women like hurting men. A lot of very empathic, sympathetic women love hurting men. Don't even recognize they're hurting when you're hooking up with them, when you're falling in love until you get in it. Truth be told, okay? But if you've got four failed engagements, you're the common denominator and you like those kind of guys. Out here holding brawn rings, Miss NBA Finals putting up stellar numbers, the wavy baby. Stellar numbers, okay? All right, let me go find one more, guys. Let's see what we got. All right. Oh, no, no, this is the one she wanted to come on. Should I end my marriage? Oh yeah, Queen Queen of says she's probably got to heal some childhood wounds as well. Yep, she could be emotionally unavailable as well, which is why she likes that unavailability because she doesn't have to commit subconsciously. A little bit of psychology there. Um, okay, hi Rebecca. The other day my husband woke me up at 4.30 a.m. to confront me because I told him that he is demanding too much of my income weekly, 35% towards bills and I need some of that income to pay off personal debt so that I can be in a better financial standing for us. He called me a bum and a deadbeat and he was yelling and cussing saying that I cannot freeload off of him. 
I was so traumatized that I left him and I'm staying with family. He has been apologizing now and asking me to come home and that I can keep the money now that he will figure it out. I have a feeling that he is hiding something financially. I showed him retirement and savings and he has yet to show me his. When I ask him, does he have a retirement account? His response is, I have what I need. He wants to have a child with me and I feel very uncomfortable about everything. He, we have very little savings. And every time I ask him about his finances so that we can start planning a life together, he tells me that I don't understand finances. He is 53, by the way, and I am 38 years old. I would appreciate any advice you give. Thank you. And the question is, should I end my marriage? Yes, this is her husband. They're already married, guys. I just got a lot more questions. I got questions. I got questions about how long you've been married to him. Because you're 38 and he's 53. You're wanting a baby. He's significantly older than you to be having a child but I mean okay but maybe if he was stacked and had a bunch of money but he don't and now there's all these questions about finances and he waking you up at 4 30 a.m in the morning to confront you about saying that you need a little bit more of your income to pay down some debt so you're in a better financial situation for them yeah this is he called me a bum and a deadbeat and he was yelling saying I cannot freeload off of him and this is his wife this is not this is not his girlfriend this is his wife y'all Jabari says I could see if he was 23 yes um mind of, mind of C said OMG that's sad he belittled her that's traumatizing within itself run babe how is she the deadbeat when he ain't secure financially at 53? And he's got all this financial trauma because he's been used by women, obviously, because to wake up at 4 30 in the morning and be triggered to attack her verbally, he's got a bunch of unhealed stuff going on with the finances and women. You're only 38, sweetheart. Sweetheart. I'm just going to say sweetheart. Uh, this ain't looking good. You don't want to, yeah, you don't, that's right. Joe Rose, you don't want to be having a baby and struggling. And then you don't even know the status of his situation. And yeah, you done married him without even getting a clear understanding of what the situation is. And he's 53. Are you trying to have a baby with somebody 53? Rod Kelly says topic while engaged. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding, ding. There is so much going on here that was not discussed in the pertinent stages of the dating and courting process. You should not be in, married in bed and 4.30 in the morning and he's waking you up with these type of attacks because you're triggering him with your financial questions. It's a no-go for me. Um, I think you guys need to be getting some counseling. If you're not ready, if you if there's other stuff, I get the feeling there's probably lots more than this. There's lots more than this. So you you guys need to get some couples counseling. If you can't get to the root of it, definitely don't don't just go and have a baby. Don't don't just get pregnant and ignore all of this just because you want a baby and because you're married. That would be a nightmare. And don't ignore the, the amount of triggering and emotional toxic baggage he's got going on that he attacked you verbally to where you left the home. It was that bad. You left. You were scared. You're traumatized. Uh, no. 
that ain't yeah that ain't that is not any room that's not the space the environment to be bringing a child into this you don't you aren't even safe you don't even feel comfortable you don't even have answers you want to bring a baby into that situation nah and it feels to me like there's some type of a dynamic here where he feels like because he's older he's got the upper hand so he's not as concerned about you leaving or he must act like he's got money but now he's been faking and fronting to get you darling now this i do know you gotta older man who's trying to act like he's got some guap in order to attract a younger woman now she he done got her married her but now she's inside of this situation with questions and realizing you ain't got it like you pretended to have it to get me and now we having a bunch of problems because the chickens have come home to roost and she looking at you like, um, I'm giving too much of my income to this household I need to be paying off some more bills um, sugar daddy you need to be taking care of me. You need to be paying more of these bills. Why am I even putting this much into the household? Why can't, why can't we uh, look at your finances? Why can't I know exact? we're married? Why can't I know what's really going on with your accounts, your retirement accounts? Yeah. Sugar daddy issues. Sugar daddy issues. He done got her. tricking off he got her like this and it was not verified yep 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 I knew a situation where a man pretended to be a retired uh, basketball player and was literally tricking off his whole pension from his blue collar job where he made a lot of money and had been laid off and was tricking off on his pension on women acting like he was a retired NBA player to get women using his pension to trick off and impress women. Don't what? They they'll do it. Guys these men be pressed. You don't understand. Men are pressed. They are trying to get women. They'll, they, you got some stupidity going on out here. Stupidity. Yep. All right, guys. My time is up. I have got a headache. I am going to bed. I'm going to come back uh, early next week with some more. I'm going to do some on not on a Friday night. How does a professional woman marry a federal convict? Honey, I don't know. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I think you if you have a professional woman and she's lonely with low self-esteem, just because a woman makes good money and has a career doesn't mean that she's um, stable mentally. Okay? I know the time went so fast. All right, guys. Mwah. Blessings in abundance. I will see you next Wednesday. I'm going to be more live next week and be doing back doing some more videos. I've been working on my new books and getting some stuff done. So I love you. Yeah, if he's fine, that's another one. He could be fine, but she could have low self-esteem and be lonely. All right. Mwah. Blessings in abundance, y'all. I will see you next week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.